Okay, so this time let's try let's try to work on an argument using the rules of inference without using the truth table. So first let's recall the three common types or common rules of inference in your module. So you have the modus ponens or the affirming what affirms. If P then Q and P therefore Q modus tollens, the mode of denying what denies. If P then Q and not Q therefore not p and the most commonly used rule is the logism if p then q and if q then r therefore or it implies that if p then r is true so these are the three that it, the three rules that are commonly used and we'll use some of them in this example Okay, so if I eat my spinach, then I'll become muscular. If I become muscular, then I'll become a professional wrestler. If I won't bleach my hair, then I won't become a professional wrestler. If I bleach my hair, then I'll wear sequin tights. If I am not ridiculous, then I won't wear sequin tights. Therefore, if I eat my spinach, then I'll be ridiculous. Okay, so it's just like before, we'll break this down into logical statements. Okay, so let's see let let's say s be the statement i ate my spinach then let's say m be the statement i become muscular then let's say w for the statement i become a professional wrestler and let's say statement h or h to hope to represent the statement I will bleach my hair and let's say T for the statement I will wear sequin tights and finally let's say let R be the statement I am ridiculous okay now this time let's convert the statements above into logic symbols one by one so if i eat my if i eat my spinach then i'll become muscular so that would be if s then m correct then the second statement if i become muscular then i'll be a professional wrestler so that would be if m then w if I won't bleach my hair, then I won't become a professional wrestler. And that's not H. If not H, then not W. If I bleach my hair, then I'll wear sequin tights. So if H, then T. Right? Finally, if I am not ridiculous, then I won't wear sequin tights. That should be I am not. So we represent it as... If not R, then not T. Okay? There. Therefore, the conclusion says that if I eat my spinach, then I'll be ridiculous. So, if S, then R. Okay? So that's it. Next, now what I love to do when I work on this is I label everything. So I label the premises P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5, and then the conclusion. So we have five premises. Another thing that I do is I get the contrapositive of each statement. Remember, the contrapositive is equivalent to the conditional statement. So if P then Q, the contrapositive is just if not Q, then not P. So that's just what I do. Again, they are equivalent, so they have the same truth values. So we can use that in replacement of our conditional statements. That would be easy later to solve. Okay, so these are the contrapositives of each of the statements. Now we will proceed with our solution to validate the val to, to, to check the validity of each argument since i want i'm trying to check if if s if s then r is true or holds 
or, or in a valid conclusion, then I would want to start with a statement that starts with S. So I use if S, then M. I label it so that I won't get confused. I say this is P1, the premise 1, which is in the given. Then if M, then W, that's P2, which is also the given. I label them as statements 1 and 2. Now, this is a syllogism. If you recall syllogism, if P then Q and if Q then R, so therefore if P then Q, so we have here, parang kinain si M. So therefore, we say if S then W, syllogism. Another statement is if not H then not W, which is P3. So gusto kong kainin si W, so I take the contrapositive of statement 4. The contrapositive is just if not, if W then H. So if you look at the pink, highlighted statements we get a syllogism which is which ends up with if s then h so that's the syllogism of statement three and five next we have p4 if h then t okay and if you look at statement six and seven again that's a syllogism so we end up having if s then t a syllogism of six and seven Finally, we get if not R, then not T. So the statement, the premise 5. I want to eat up the T. So I take the contrapositive. If T, then R, the contrapositive of statement 9. So look at the green statements. We have a syllogism which implies that if S, then R. It's a syllogism of statements 8. And then, if you look at this, if you compare, statement 11 is just the same as our statement, as our conclusion. So, therefore, the argument is valid. Now, if we verify this, we get, using the Euler diagram, so we have those who eat spinach is muscular. So, spinach is inside muscular. And then, those who are muscular are professional wrestlers. So everything in the muscular set is inside the professional wrestler set. Then, the contrapositive, if the, the wrestlers are people who dye their hair. So all wrestlers dye their hair. So it's inside again. And then the next statement, if it's a negative, you look at the contrapositive. So next statement is, if H then T. So those who dye their, those who bleach their hair are ridiculous. So everything is inside the ridiculous circle. So what do we see? Though, therefore, those who eat spinach are ridiculous. Therefore, our argument is really valid. That's it.